What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be discussing a player the Detroit Lions brought in for a workout today. This is a running back, so let's get it started. No, so I got a shout out, Dosa D, uh, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. Welcome, everybody, to another video. Glad you guys are here, and we are back for another video about the Detroit Lions, man. Every time I start a new video, I get excited, okay? I just get some kind of rush that goes through my body. I'm like, let's get it started. That was so weird. Why did, can we restart? Still rolling? You're gonna make me do this? Uh, today we're talking about a running back that the Detroit Lions brought in for a workout today, and that is Dante Foreman. Dante Foreman, a former running back for the for the uh, for the for the team with the with with the football and the color jerseys. Let's restart. This video has went terribly wrong. Welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here, and we are back and discussing some more Detroit Lions. Now I know, again, you're probably thinking running back, but it's not Leonard Fournette. Some people are thinking that, but it's okay. We're working on another running back today. I just want to throw in this list disclaimer before we get it started. Like all of the trial videos. Keep in mind, it doesn't necessarily mean the Lions are going to sign this player, but it does give them a little bit of a reference, someone that could, they could possibly go to during the season if they needed to bring someone in, okay? That's why the Lions have held all of these workouts and they brought in tons of players. Some of them they have signed, some of them they haven't, but it's really good to just know what's out there in case something does come up during the season. So today we're talking about a running back that's kind of a big name, to be honest with you. Now, his NFL career has definitely not gone, gone as planned, but in college, he was a big name and he won a lot of awards. A lot of people knew him. He was a pretty high draft pick. So he has the potential, it just hasn't worked out so far. So we're going to start back in his high school days, work through college, and then talk about the NFL, what he's done so far in the NFL. And we're also going to look at his strengths and weaknesses, plus a little bit of a grading system that I'm implementing just to keep it a little easier for you guys and how I feel he is as a player, what he does well, and what he doesn't necessarily do well. So going back to high school, he played running back and defensive end. Now that's pretty impressive, but keep in mind, guys, in high school, you know, you can play both sides of the football. Defensive end, he is pretty big for running back, okay? He's 6'1", 236 pounds. I don't know if he was that in high school, but he still has some pretty good size. So I can see how you can play both of those positions. I guess that kind of tells you how his size is. He averaged 8.2 yards per attempt and he had 31 touchdowns. He was the 67th ranked running back in the nation. So he got some pretty good recognition. He ended up committing to Texas and with Texas, he really didn't get a start until his junior year. In his freshman year, he played in a few games, had a little bit of production, but it was really that junior year where he took off. And when I say he took off, I mean the guy exploded. I mean getting recognition as the best running back in college. I mean in a Heisman watch. This guy was a monster in his junior year. He actually won the Doak Walker Award, which is the best running back in the nation. So I guess that tells you all you need to know about how much he actually exploded in his junior year. He had 2,028 yards, 6.3 yards per attempt, and 15 touchdowns. Yeah, those stats are pretty darn nice. I'm not going to lie. Also, he was rushing against Baylor, which was the first time Texas saw that since Jamal Charles. And then obviously, he had to add another 1,000 that just, just to make sure everything was good. He had to put another 1,000 on top of that. Let's hop into the NFL now. So he's a third round pick by the Houston Texans, and which is kind of funny because he went to Texas, drafted by the Texans. Third, third round pick by the Texans. He comes in, you know, he signs that four-year deal like all of the rookies do. He gets a small little opportunity that continues to get bigger and bigger as the season goes on. But then unfortunately, during the season on the, the latter, part of the season he goes down with an injury and it was on a touchdown run which was a non-contact injury which always concerns people and this one concerned people for the right reason because it was a torn achilles that put him out for the year so torn achilles ended his uh rookie season which wasn't bad or 300 yards rushing but his rookie season would end there He'd later get released in august of 2019 the reason for releasing him apparently by the houston texans was his poor work habits and that he was late to meetings so obviously you don't want to see that i'm sure injuries had something to do with that as well he was later claimed by the indianapolis colts but he had a torn bicep uh and he sat out the 2019 season the rest of the 2019 season he worked out with the titans and now he's working out with the detroit lions so as you guys see his nfl career is just the completely went off the rails i mean this is not what you want to see a guy dealing with tons of injuries then all of a sudden the team you know doesn't really want him i mean it's been a mess a third round pick that was at one point a heisman watch candidate that at one point was named the best running back in college football has struggled to find a team just in a few years he's not even on an nfl team anymore well he worked out with the detroit lions today and i watched some of him and let me just 
just say he's impressive. I mean, he was definitely an impressive player, and he is still pretty impressive. And there's still some things I like, some things maybe I don't like. And he's a very specific running back, okay? I think he brings something pretty specific to his game. Now, obviously, the late to team, team meetings, the poor work habits are something that a guy like Matt Patricia would not be okay with. So I think that would be something that, you know, Matt Patricia is going to fix that. Either it's gonna, you're going to fix it or you're not going to be here. I mean, that's how it would be for this running back. So the potential is there. So if you can get him to kind of lock in, lock in, hone his game in, I mean, this could be a valuable asset. And with some injuries that we've been dealing with, good thing is both Scarborough and Swift back. But, you know, with some injuries, this could be a guy that maybe down the road you need to get a running back and this could be that move. Kind of reminds me of both Scarborough a little bit in that way, um, kind of in his play style. So let's hop into the strength of weakness, man. Let's start off what he does well. First off, with the potential. Okay, obviously the potential. He's a third round pick. He was named the best running back in college. I think that's a kind of an obvious one, but I thought I'd throw that in there. Next up, he's a very patient runner. I don't think he's one of those guys um, that really rushes things to just get into the wrong hole and make the wrong decision. His vision is pretty good. We'll get to that in a second, but he's a patient runner. However, he's a one cut type of runner. Okay, he's not a runner that's going to dance. He's not a dancing running back, not a super elusive running back, but he's a hey, make my decision, make the move and go. But he's patient. And a lot of times he does pick the right hole to go through. Uh, he does have very good top end speed. I mean, this is a guy that you get out there. And if he's running down the field, it's going to be tough to catch him. He had a 4-4-6 at his combine. Now, a big reason that he fell a little bit more is that he didn't really compete too much at the combine. For whatever reason, he didn't compete too much at the combine. But his combine numbers were great. 4-4-6, 40 yard dash, 18 bench press reps. Guys, I mean, there's, there's a lot to love here. There's a lot to like about this running back. And his top end speed, it shows off a lot. You see, if you just go watch his highlights, you can see that top end speed show off a lot. Because a lot of his big plays, especially back with Texas, came from guys, they just couldn't catch him. He'd make more move, get into the open field, and no one could catch this guy. And with his size, over 230 pounds and over six foot tall, to run that fast, yeah, that's, that's an athlete. That is the definition of an athlete. He can break some tackles, which is nice. He's not hes not a small runner, right? He's good. He can run through some tackles, actually some wimpy tackles. But like I said, he's a one-cut type of running back, right? He's got a strong upper body, so he will shag off bad defenders. If you're not getting low on him, he's going to shag you off. I think his upper body strength is great. You know, he can throw, he can deliver the boom up, up on his upper body. But his lower body, he doesn't really seem too great at keeping his legs turning. And otherwise, he can be brought down by ankle tackles and things like that. And I think if he could work on being maybe more, elu uh, more elusive, right? Work on some of that footwork, things like that, to just make him quicker as a running back because he's not very elusive. He's not that type of runner. I'm not saying you're going to try to make him DeAndre Swift or Jason Huntley. I'm just saying maybe a little bit quicker feet could definitely help him, you know, stay up a little bit longer, maybe not be brought down by ankle tackles, things like that. And he's not a very quick running back either, okay? Now, he's got the top end speed. He's dynamic, but he's not very quick. He's not super explosive, right? He's not a very quick and twitchy runner, but once you get him over to the open field, the guy's gone, all right? He's like, he's like a car. He's like, Okay, if you had like a little like sports car, like a little Porsche, or if you had like this big main car that doesn't really steer well, like the handling's kind of rough, okay? You got some rough handling, but the car's got a thousand horsepower, right? This thing will just go. It's like if you get him in a drag race, he's going to kill it. Now you get him into a windy road, he may struggle a little bit, okay? That's how I would say uh, he is as running back. That was a weird analogy. Now let's move on to the things and grade him a little bit. First off, quickness, I would give him a five out of ten. It's not terrible. I mean, he's a little quick. I think that first one cut that he does make, he is a one cut running back. I mean, he's a definition. He's an in-between the tackle, one cut type of runner. That reminds me of Bo a little bit, a little bit of Ty, sort of, not really Ty. I would say Ty's top end speed. Reminds me of carry on a little bit, just with a little bit more top end speed, kind of like Ty does, but not that fast. Kind of in between there. So he's kind of a mix of everybody. Just kind of have little different pieces of those running backs. Uh, but his quickness isn't insane. I give it a five out of 10. So that's basically just completely average. His top end speed, I give it an eight out of 10. Not the fast running back. He's not as fast is tied, probably not as fast as Jason Huntley, but it's pretty darn good for his size. I'm not going to lie with you there. His strength, I'm also going to give him an 8 out of 10. I mean, he always gets stronger, but he's not easy to break down. Let's be honest here. His vision, I'm going to give him a 7.5 out of 10 here. Now, it's usually not super complex. It's not a lot of stretch plays. It's usually, hey, we're going to put you in the gun. All right, it's going to be a lot of uh, quarterback reads. It's going to be a lot of read options. Either you're going to give it or not. You pick one of the holes, one of the gaps to fill, and you go. That's what his reads are, and he's pretty good at it. He's got that quick decision making, but he's patient. doesn't rush it, but I think it's a kind of limited playbook that we've seen from him based definitely back in college. His pass blocking, I'm going to give him a 5. I think you could give him a 4. His recognition seems to be fine, picking up the right guy. He's not too hesitant. He will attack uh, the lineman, but he's not very good at it. I mean, the dude, I, he kind of gives up on plays early. He lets guys buy him sometimes. It, it's not the best. It's not definitely reliable. So I think that's probably the one thing that he needs to improve upon. And catching, we didn't see it a lot. He didn't really have a lot of targets, so... I really don't know what we're going to get out of him when it comes to that. So that's kind of how I feel about him as a player. That's what I see. I mean, the potential is obviously there. He just has some things to work on. And, you know, Matt Patricia does want to bring him in down the road or heck, even right now, then uh, those that'll definitely something that has to be cleaned up is his work habits and not being late to meetings. That has to be cleaned up. Let me know your thoughts, comments below, though. Do you think the short line should sign him? Thank you, Brad, for watching. And I'm out.